Yeehaw, I got snake eyes. You're good at this, Jackie. You too, Caroline. You got potential. I always say killing's good, clean fun for the whole family. Today we're going to be building a good guy, specifically Chucky from Child's Play. Released in 1988, this doll is a landmark character in the horror genre for the past three or three years, spawning over six sequels, a reboot, and a new sci-fi series airing now. This builds personal to me because of how much Chucky scared me as a child. Our goals for this build are pretty straightforward. He has to be able to frighten grown adults and kids alike. He's a serial killer with the ability to kill just about anything he can get his hands on. Chucky is able to sneak around and pretend to be a child's plaything when he wants to be. And when he kills, he's very effective at it. So we're going to need some kind of a attack in which we are sneaking about. We'll figure it out. We get four goods at level one, so let's put him to strength, intelligence, charisma, and constitution. Chucky is surprisingly strong for his size. He's very intelligent. He has the charisma that lasts about 33 years. He has a constitution because he keeps on making sequels. Chucky was a human, but he's now a doll, so we need an ancestry to reflect this, and I'm so excited to make our first pop it on the channel. We get a boost to our Constitution's Charisma and one free boost. I would suggest putting it into Strength. We get a flaw to our Dexterity, meaning it's going to be a, not a 10 but an 8. And because we are a toy, I'm going to say it, we only have specific joints we can move. We get 6 hit points, we're a size small. We get 25 base moon speed and dark vision to see in the dark. You get a plus 1 against saving throws against death effects, disease, and poison, as well as saving throws against effects that would give you drained, paralyzed, or sickened conditions. You're a toy, you don't really need to worry about that kind of stuff. But you're flammable, you have a weakness to fire equal to one third of your total level. For our heritage, I suggest Ghost Poppets, since Charles used Bambala to put his soul into a good guy doll, getting a resistance of negative damage equal to half your level. And for our first feat, pick Harmless Doll. You gain a trained proficiency rank in Deception, and you can impersonate an inanimate toy or mindless poppet. You can hide without using cover, or concealment from other creatures that don't realize you're alive. As long as you're in a location where a toy of your shape wouldn't be out of place. You're the hot new toy on the market and Andy seems to really like you. You being on his head to walk around the entire world should be fine. Believe it or not, Charles Lee Ray is a criminal. A serial killer even. So we get two ability boosts. I suggest putting your first one into intelligence and your second one into constitution. You're trained the stealth skill and the underworld lore skill as well as gain the experienced smuggler skill feat. But to be the best at sneak attacks we need to be a rogue. So we get 8 plus our constitution modifier for health, get a boost, put it into strength, we're an expert in perception, and we're trained in fortitude, and we're experts in reflex and will saves. For skills, we're trained in stealth, we also get one or more skills depending on our road racket, we'll talk about that in a minute. We also get additional skills equal to 7 plus our intelligence modifier, so we get 9. Since we already have stealth, and we're going to get intimidation from our racket, and we get deception from pop it, we're going to get thievery, performance, occultism, diplomacy, athletics, arcana, survival, medicine, and lastly society. For attacks, you're trained in simple weapons as well as the rapier, the sap, short bow, and the short sword. And you're also trained in unarmed attacks. For defenses, you're trained in light armor and unarmed defense. And for our class DC, you're trained in the rogue class DC. On the screen, you'll not see only the skill progression from all your levels in rogue, but also the skill fee progression. You can take these in any order you like. These are the ones I feel are most appropriate for Chucky. He just gets so many as a rogue, much like Scrooge McDuck. He's a great at a lot of different things, and, uh, and I'll be spending a uh, portion of this time to explain why I picked certain ones above others. The ones I picked that mean most important, at least to me, are deception, intimidation, stealth, thievery, and occultism. All these kind of encapsulate Chucky's very personal and very necessary traits to be Chucky, such as being scary, being stealthy, stealing things, and of course being a worshiper of Bambala to try to get his body back. So you can take them in any order you want, as well as take any of the skill feats in any order you want, as long as you meet the requirements, but these are my picks of the most important skills for Chucky. And of the major skill feats, I would suggest getting all the sneaks up to Legendary Sneak, getting impressive performance to pretend to be a doll, quick disguise to go back into looking like a doll, nimble crawl so you can crawl around the ground, and of course, scared to death so you can scare people, well, to death. But let's talk about our racket, and the racket we're going to be going with is of course Ruffian, as Charles Ray is a bit of a brute and his doll version is no different. You can deal sneak attack with any simple weapon in addition to weapons listed in the sneak attack class feature, so the weapons I already previously talked about. When you critically succeed on an attack roll using a simple weapon and the target has a flat footed condition, being unable to defend itself or focus, you can then apply critical specialization effects for the weapon you're wielding. However you don't gain benefits, the weapon die is bigger than the D8. We are then trained in intimidation and medium armor, and we gain light armor expertise, we also gain it for our medium armor. 
and we gain mastery. We also gain mastery in medium armor. But let's talk about sneak attacks. You get a 1d6 at this level. When you strike a creature that is flat-footed with the agile finesse weapon, or any simple weapon in your case, or a ranged weapon attack, you deal an extra 1d6 precise damage. And for the ranged attack, for thrown weapon, it has to be made with a weapon that's also agile and finesse. And you have a surprise attack at this level, meaning on the first round of combat, if you roll deception or stealth for initiative, which you should because you're a, a doll, and B, a rogue. Creatures who haven't acted yet are flat-footed to you, so you can start the battle with a nice, big slice. And for our rogue feat at this level, pick plant evidence to blame your crimes on different people, because you can't gaslight children without the right tools. A very quick second level for us, for our rogue feat, get brutal beating, to brutally beat people. When your strike is a critical hit and deals damage, your target is frightened for one, which makes sense, because Chucky is very, very scary, at least to me. Then at the third level we get Deny Advantage. You aren't flat-footed to hidden, undetected, or flanking creatures of your level or lower, or creatures of your level or lower with a surprise attack. However, they can still help their allies flank. And for our general field, let's get Toughness to increase our health by our level, because Chucky is made of a sturdier material than most. For a fourth level Rogue Feat, I was just getting Dread Striker. For any creature who has a fright condition, is also flat-footed against your attacks. So if you frighten people with a critical strike, they're just going to keep being afraid, and you can keep getting pretty heavy hits off of them. For 5th level, we get Ability Boost, put them in Strength, Charisma, Constitution, and Intelligence. For Answer Feet, I suggest Washout. Every time you succeed a Fortitude save against an ongoing poison, you reduce the stage by 2, or 1 if it's a Virtual and Poison, and each critical success you achieve reduces by 3, or 2 with a Virtual and Poison. Your sting attack goes up to 2d6 now. You also get Weapon Tricks. You get Extra Proficiency, the Civil Weapons and Armor Strikes, as well as your typical Rogue Weapons, and when you succeed on a Critical Attack against a flat-footed creature while using the weapon listed you have, you can apply the Critical specialization effects for the weapon you're wielding. For a 6th level rogue feat, let's get Analyze Weakness. The next time you deal sneak attack damage to a chosen creature with a strike before the end of your turn, you deal an additional 2d6 precision damage and 11 and 17th and increases up to 3d6 and 4d6 respectively. So with Analyze Weakness, you can just stack on damage to a creature that, if you time it right, is deathly afraid of you. At our 7th level, we get Evasion. Our rank and reflex saves increase with the Master, and we roll success in our reflex save, we get a critical success instead. For our general feat, I was just getting Die Hard to die the dying condition of 5 instead of 4, because Chucky is tough as hell. We also get Vigilant and Senses, our perception increases with the Master, we also get Weapon Specialization. We deal an additional 2 damage. With weapons and our attacks, we have Expert in, which increases the 3 when we are a Master at him. For our 8th level Rogue feat, I was just getting Twist the Knife to deal persistent bleed damage to a target equal to your number of sneak attack damage die dealing persistent bleed damage of 4 by the end of the build. Since your adversary is a kid and whoever you can rope into helping him, you're probably going to be well within kill range even with the bleed damage. At the ninth level, we get an Ancestry Feet, so I suggest getting Scaling Puppet. You get a 15 foot climb speed because you're small and you need to climb up on things like kitchen counters and scale walls and stuff. You also get to build any strike at this level. It's a free action. It's triggered when your strike hits a flat footed creature and deals damage. You can apply debilitations to it that lasts till the end of your next turn. So it has a debilitation to give it a negative 10 to its speed, and it can make it infuel for 1. You also get greater fortitude to increase your fortitude up to expert. At the 10th level, we get ability boost, put in the strength, charisma, constitution, and intelligence. For a rogue field level, we get sneak savant. When you roll a failure on a sneak action, you get a success instead. For those little quick hallway runs you like to do in the background. At the 11th level, if you get a general feat, I'll suggest getting fleet to increase our land speed by 5 for an even 30. You also get Rogue Expertise, your Rogue Class DC increase up to Expert, as well as our Sneak Attack, which bumps up to 3d6 now. At our 12th level, we get Spring from the Shadows. You can strike up to your speed, but you must end your movement next to an enemy you're hidden or undetected by. You can then strike that enemy you remain hidden from and undetected from that creature until you strike, which means you can do a quick Sneak Attack with a quick run like you tend to do when you slice someone's ankle or their knee. At the 13th level, you get an Ancestry Feat, also just getting Reanimating Spark. You're sort of one hit point after going beyond zero. You lose the dying condition and your unconscious condition, and you can act normally on this turn. But you do gain and increase your wounded condition as normal when losing the dying condition in this way. You didn't make eight movies in all these years without being able to survive long enough to see a sequel. You also get improved evasion. Your reflex saves increase up to legendary. And when you roll a critical failure on a reflex save, you only get a failure instead. And when you roll a failure on a reflex save that ends with damage, you can take half that damage. You also get incredible senses, your perception increases up to legendary, you get light armor expertise, your proficiency ranks in medium, light, and unarmored defense increases up to expert, you also get master tricks, you get proficiency rank bonuses in all weapons you are able to use, up to master. 
At the 14th level, you get a rogue feat, I'll suggest getting bloody debilitation, and you can choose a target to take 3d6 persistent bleed damage, you're able to pick the debilitation, which is really good because you like to make people bleed a lot. At our 15th level, we get more ability boosts, putting the strength, constitution, charisma, and intelligence. You get double debilitation at this level. When you use debilitating strike, you can apply two debilitations simultaneously, but removing one removes both, which is really good when you want to put bleeding and speed effects on a person. If you've got a general feat, I'll get weapon frequency to become trained in all martial weapons, but you can still only use your simple weapons and whatever you're able to use for sneak attacks. You also get greater weapon specialization, all the damage you get for weapon specialization increases to four with weapons and unarmed strikes in which you're expert in and six if you're a master in them. For our rogue feat, at the 16th level I was suggesting defensive roll. When a physical attack would reduce you to zero hit points, you can make a reaction to half the damage once per 10 minutes. So even if you would have a kill strike, you can instead be like, no, roll out of the way and take half damage to stay alive. You're Chucky. You always find a way to come back. For the 17th level, we get Ancestry Feet, also just getting Restitch. You can cast Regenerate at the 7th level. It's an arcane spell once per day. You gain a regeneration of 15, which restores 15 points at the start of each of your turns. While regenerating, you can't die from damage, and your dying condition can't increase to the value that would kill you. It allows you to survive from being set aflame, shot, blown up, thrown in propeller blades, shot again after a six shovel fight, axe to bits, and of course curb stomped into a wall. You get Slipper in Mind, your rank and will saves increase up to Master, and when you roll a success on a will save, you get a critical success instead, and our sneak attack meets its zenith at 4d6 every strike. At the 18th level, we get a rogue feat, get implausible infiltration, you find tiny holes or imperfections that no one else could see, and try to fit yourself through them, possibly moving directly through a wall or a floor from one side to the other. Movement fails if the wall or floor is made of something other than wood, plaster, or stone thicker than 10 feet or contains even a layer of thin metal, but that's okay because you find a way to infiltrate walls through like ducts or loose openings and stuff like that to get to where you need to go. At our 19th level, we get Light Armor Mastery, your proficiency ranks in Light, Medium, and Armor Defense increase up to Master. You also get General Feet, let's take Weapon Frigency once again, and this time pick Advanced Weapons for Firearms, so that'll cover all the weapons and a gun Chucky can use to kill people. We also get Master Strike at this level. Get a proficiency rank bonus to your rogue class DC up to master, and as weapon strike as a free action, when you hit a flat footed creature that deals damage, you can attempt to enfeeble it, paralyze it, knock it out for two hours, or outright kill it depending on how bad they fail to check. And with that, we have our last four ability boosts at level 20, put them in the strength, constitution, charisma, and intelligence. And for our last rogue feat, I'll suggest getting hidden paragon, you become invisible for one minute, even if you use a hostile action. No glitter dust, sea invisibility, or similar effects can reveal you, though creatures can still use seek action to locate you as normal. After you're all done killing, turn back into a normal doll with no one the wiser. With all that being said, do you want to be Chucky, and do you want to play? As a rogue, you get legendary skills on all Chucky's trademarks, including the occultism, first relationship with the occult, thievery to steal things, stealth to sneak around and hide, deception to pretend to be a doll, and intimidation to scare everyone, including yours truly. All with legendary plus 8 and plus 20 from your level, making Chucky a good guy at all these skills. Plus you're unmistakably a doll, to plus 33 to your reception rolls, to pretend to be a good guy. Sneak attacks are amazing to start combat with, adding up to a bloody score of 12d6, plus 3d6 persistent bleed damage, plus 12d6 analyze weakness, on top of our maxed out strength score of plus 18, even out to a low of 45 and a max of 180 if all three strikes hit. Not including mass strike, which could outright kill people, which is good my guy. As a criminal, Charles Lee was pretty forgettable. As a doll, Chucky is infamous. Grab your favorite knife, play a little game called Hide the Soul, and haunt my dreams for years to come. Just remember not to be a total jackass the rest of your party or else no one else will want to play. <laughs> Happy Halloween.